Are we off to find that elven sanctum then, or something else? We certainly can. Though we do have something else that needs our attention. We found a Hofgoofer out in the Barrens, my lady. In terrible pain. We freed it, but there's another in turn somewhere beneath the Forbidden Sands. A Hofgoofer? I haven't seen one since I was a child. And what else? There's still that secret elven library in Alfheim. Lead the way. Freya, I've always wondered, why was Freya so revered here so quickly upon his first arrival? Well, to begin with, it wasn't his first arrival. Very few know this, but Freyr was one of the earliest visitors to Alfheim, back in the dawn of realm travel. Oh? A bit before my time. Do you tell. We believed for a long time that all the giants had died in the Flood, until one of them appeared in Vanaheim. Her name was Gerth, and she came offering to teach us the secrets of traveling between realms using Bifrost light. Freyr became immediately infatuated with her. He always yearned to wander, and along came someone who could truly show him how. So, wander they did, exploring the world tree from root to branch. But one day, it came time for Gerth to wander away. Freyr was heartbroken, and resolved himself to perform some great feat to win her back. He set his aim on the grandest of gestures. He intended to be the first to find the elusive source of Bifrost light. And he succeeded, although quite by accident. Freyr believed he navigated best while fortified by a potent blend of Vanir herbs. When he wandered, he wandered. And he managed to wander from the World Tree directly into the Lake of Souls. The elves have never seen anybody come out of the lake before, so... It got some attention. Oh, that is bloody hilarious. I don't know whether he worked his charms at that point, or they just assumed him to be a great deity. But of course, he hadn't made this journey in search of responsibility, so he didn't stick around long. Still, the legend of his manifestation was passed along through the ages. It even endured after the Great Division, remembered by light and dark elf alike. So when at last he returned, he was uniquely situated to gain the trust of both sides and help to create a truce. The problem was, both sides trusted only him. So the peace could only last as long as he stayed around to keep it. And with the long war dragging on without an end in sight, I suppose making any kind of peace was an irresistible notion for him, even if it meant having to rule. Much of the sand has been cleared away, but another storm rages beyond that pass, which must mean... Another half gufa. Odd. It looks as though the Light Elves sealed off this section of the Barrens. Why? Luckily for us, a very considerate goddess has enhanced our magic chisel, and we can unseal it. My. That is lucky. The Forbidden Sands lay beyond. Contested territory, according to Bela. And another storm to endure. I remember when Freya and I traveled to this realm as children. The desert was healthy and full of life back then. I can't help but fear that era has ended for good and our efforts here are futile. It's a fair concern. Healing this land will take more than a pair of singing half -gifa. But I have to believe, in the long run, we're doing right by Alfheim. Well, best we start looking for a way underground. Keep a lookout for a cave! The other hop goofa must be under there! I see an entrance! I hope Freyr will appreciate our work here in the desert. I wonder if he knows how poorly this realm has fared in his absence. Aye. Hearing the song of the sands again is a rare privilege. Even if it's only a solo act. Or a duet, once this half is free. This architecture... It is not of the Dark Elves. An abandoned ancient settlement, by the looks of it. Built long before the Lightwell's creation. More hive matter as well. I'd say we're on the right track, then. This kind of hive material is sensitive to sound. How odd. When I last came here with you and Atreus, I assumed the absence of Alfheim's light was an aberration. I 
didn't realize it was covered by hive matter. Aye. And as far as the Dark Elves are concerned, it's that light column in the center of the temple that's the aberration. Just look at how old some of these surfaces are. Far older than the light well, or even our trapped half giffer for that matter. That's quite the empathetic perspective, Mimir. Well, dangle from a burly god's backside for a few winters, and you'll find yourself looking for all sorts of new perspectives. <laughs> changes hands often in Nalfheim, or so it appears. Big Thier did mention that these ruins have historical significance for the Light Elves. I assume they're only here to keep intruders out. Well, at least they tried. <laughs> will allow them to breed again. It was a dazzling display once. The skies of Alfheim filled with their song. I imagine it's the lack of fresh light that's caused this pair to grow abnormally large. No use in having babies if there's nothing for them to feed on. Trying to protect their children from a harsh world. I can relate. I wonder if these two comprehend the choice they face once free. What choice do you speak of? The life cycle of the Hofgufa. In order to breed, they must pass on their light to their children. And without light, they will die. I suppose that's all any of us can hope for in the end. That our death has purpose. That we can live on through our children. Well, 
given another chance, I know what choice I would make. Good. Almost there. Aye, back to the surface then. The fate of these creatures, it reminds me of a story. Does it? There once was a blacksmith whose king commanded him to construct a box that could contain all the evils of the world. But no metal could hold such power. So the blacksmith used the flame Kratos, of... is this a story meant to ease my grief? Perhaps it is just a story. A way to pass the time. I appreciate the sentiment, but, well, your stories... What about my stories? I wouldn't exactly call them a comfort. Fair. Mamir is the better storyteller. Now don't sell yourself short, brother. You've come a long way from the days of laconic fables. It's okay. Finish your story, Kratos. The blacksmith's daughter was the key to unlocking the box. He died trying to protect her from those who would open it. Well, at least it's a relatable story. Enemy on the left! It appears we've overstayed our welcome in our fight. Rot! If my stories are of no comfort, take solace in knowing you did what you thought was best for your son's safety. Even these creatures know. There is little choice for a parent. You are not alone. <sighs> I'm not, am I? And now neither are they. Thank you, Kratos. This land sings once more. We've done good here. No rush to leave yet, is there? Who knows what kind of adventures await us in a freshly lit barrens?